Hi, welcome to R&S Academy. My name is Ram Prasad. Let me give a small brief about me. I did my master's in r and and then I worked for 25 years with various organizations involving in product development and technology innovation functions. I had five patents filed on my name. Out of my passion, I transitioned into teaching. Presently, I am into coaching GATE and IES aspirants on r and subject. I also conduct workshop on r and systems, faculty development programs, etc. for the engineering colleges. Recently, I conducted webinars for the members of ISHRE and ASHRE. Based on the response I received for the lectures on refrigeration systems, I am presenting here with a series of lectures on psychrometry, again for the benefit of the students and the professionals. I believe these lectures will also add a great value to all of you. This is the eighth and the last lecture in the series of lectures on psychrometry. In this lecture, I will discuss the summer air conditioning system with ventilation air. However, in this case with the bypass factor is equal to X. Let me first summarize about RSHF line and the GSHF line. RSHF is the room sensible heat factor and it is equal to RSH divided by RTH. GSHF is the grand sensible heat factor and it is equal to TSH divided by GTH. The RSHF line intersects the saturation curve at room ADP and the GSHF line intersects the saturation curve at coil ADP. Let us now look at the three typical cases in summer air conditioning systems in this context. The first one is the summer air conditioning system with 100% recirculation air that is with a zero ventilation load. We discussed this case in the lecture number 6. In this case we have the outside air sensible heat load and the outside air latent heat load are zero. Hence the grand total heat is equal to the room total heat. Because of this, the RSHF line and the GSHF line will merge into one line on the psychrometric chart and the heat load on the coil and on the room are also the same in this case. All these put together will result in the coil ADP is equal to room ADP irrespective of whether the bypass factor is equal to 0 or bypass factor is equal to x. Let us now look at the next case that is the summer air conditioning system with ventilation air but bypass factor is equal to 0. We discussed this case in the previous lecture that is in lecture number 7. In this case, we have the grand total heat is greater than the room total heat. Therefore, the GSHF is not equal to the RSHF. Due to this, the GSHF line the, and the RSHF line will not merge into one and they appear as two distinct lines on the psychrometric chart. As the coil has the ventilation load along with the room loads, the heat load on the coil is greater than the heat load on the room in this case. But in spite of this, the coil ADP will be equal to the room ADP in this case because the bypass factor is equal to zero. Let us now look at the last case that is the summer air conditioning system with ventilation air but with the bypass factor is equal to x. We will be discussing this case in this lecture. In this case also we have the GTH greater than the RTH. Therefore the GSHF is not equal to the RSHF. Due to this the GSHF line and the RSHF line will not be merging into one and they appear as two distinct lines on the psychrometric chart. The heat load on the coil is greater than the heat load on the room 
up till here everything is same as in the previous case but the coil adp will not be equal to the room adp in this case because the bypass factor is equal to x this is the main differentiator in this case let us consider the same setup as in the previous case we have a room that is required to be maintained at state i against rsh and rlh the recirculation air from the room at state i mixes with the ventilation air at state o this mixture attains the state 1 and then enters into the coil if the bypass factor is equal to 0 then the coil adp is equal to room adp and therefore the state of the air leaving the coil and supplied into the room will be at state c however in this case we have the coil with a bypass factor is equal to x and some of the air at state 1 bypasses the coil due to this the air leaving the coil and supplied into the room will not be at state c but the most important consequence here is that the coil adp will not be equal to the room adp because of this the gshf line intersects the saturation curve at a different point and that is the coil adp for this case if we summarize the discussion happened so far we can say that for summer air conditioning system with the ventilation air the coil adp with bypass factor is equal to 0 will be greater than the coil adp with bypass factor is equal to x using the bypass factor value supplied by the coil manufacturer we can have s the state of the air at coil exit which is nothing but the state of the air supplied into the room let us further decode this phenomena by putting it pictorially we can visualize the situation as two independent air streams such that one stream at state 1 is passing through the coil coming in contact with it and attaining state c at coil exit the other stream of air at state 1 is all together bypassing the cooling coil this bypassed stream of air can be visualized further as two independent streams of air one is the recirculation air at state i and the other is the ventilation air at state o hence at room entry we have one stream of air entering at state c the second stream of air is entering at state i and the third stream is entering at state o however only the air stream at state c will actually be contributing towards the cooling of the room the air stream at state i will neither be contributing towards the cooling of the room nor will it be resulting in additional heat load on the room but the third air stream at state o will undoubtedly be resulting in additional heat load onto the room these two are the critical aspects of air conditioning system design for this case Let us now get into the calculations part. We have the CMM O taken from the data table specific to our application. Using CMM O, OASH and OALH can be computed. Now, let us compute the effective loads on the room due to the bypassed ventilation air. The first one is the effective room sensible heat ERSH. which is equal to rsh plus oash multiplied by bypass factor and the second one is the effective room latent heat erlh and which is equal to rlh plus oalh multiplied by bypass factor using ersh and erlh we can compute the effective sensible heat factor eshf which is the ratio of ersh divided by erth using eshf we can find the coil adp on trial and error basis with this expression on psychrometric chart assume a t value and 
collect the corresponding W value from the psychrometric chart. Iterate by substituting the T and W values in this expression against TADP and WADP until the LHS value becomes equal to the RHS value. The corresponding T is the apparatus dew point temperature and the line drawn from this point to I is called the ESHF line. The ESHF line intersects the saturation curve at coil ADP. Hence, this is the state point C. We had already seen that the GSHF line also intersects the saturation curve at coil ADP and hence the line joining 1 and C is the GSHF line. We could also see pictorially that the coil ADP with bypass factor is equal to 0 will be greater than the coil ADP with bypass factor is equal to X. Using the bypass factor, we can plot, yes, the state of the air at coil exit. The state point S yes, represents the condition of the air at coil exit and the condition of air supplied into the room. Also, the process 1S yes, is the condition line for the coil and the process SI yes, is the condition line for the room. We have TSH. TLH and the GTH value same as that of the bypass factor is equal to zero case. Hence, a refrigeration system that can deliver a minimum cooling capacity of GTH while operating at coil ADP is needed. But we also have the coil ADP with bypass factor is equal to zero greater than the coil ADP with bypass factor is equal to X. Therefore, we need to produce the same cooling capacity that is GTH at a lower evaporating temperatures. Hence, we require a refrigeration system with a higher cooling capacity when the bypass factor is equal to X. Finally, we need to compute the specification for the fan using either ERSH or TSH. With this, this lecture and also this lecture series on psychrometry is completed. In case you have any questions, doubts, etc., please feel free to write to me. I hope these 8 videos on psychrometry and the 10 earlier videos on refrigeration systems added a great value to all of you. I thank you all for your interest in watching these videos. I wish you all the best. Good luck.